from Bruce Stadium. The Raiders are a big chance on home turf as they confront the reach-up old Melbourne Storm here on Nine's Wide World of Sports. Hello everybody and welcome to our live telecast from Bruce Stadium, the national capital, and of course introducing a tremendous night of sport right through to the early hours of tomorrow morning. We'll take you over to the Oval immediately following the football here in Canberra to see the match between Australia and India in the World Cup of Cricket. A nice crowd in at Bruce Stadium, the refurbished Bruce Stadium. It looks in apple pie condition. It's 10 degrees here as we wait for the teams to come out. Tonight, of course, Canberra, the Raiders, place 10th in the competition. They take on the third place Melbourne Storm. And even with players out on origin duties, both clubs have been able to feel very strong teams indeed. In fact, looking at the Melbourne bench, which we'll do in a moment, it really typifies how strong the Southern Club is. Glenn Lazarus takes out the storm now. They play Canberra twice. Twice they've beaten them. Both times those matches were played in Melbourne. Glenn Lazarus, of course, dropped from the Origin team. He'll be looking for a big one tonight. There's the team. Martin, Lang, Bell, Mule, By, Hill, Kamali. Nickow, Bowden, Rua, Kearney, Swain, Lazarus. And look at the bench. Marquette, Evans, Rawati, Williams, and Chris Anderson's the coach. Kearney in the run on side. And there's Glenn Lazarus. He'll have a big one, I'm sure. Well, he won't be happy about getting dropped, but I just go back a week to when he uh, had his team in a circle, giving them plenty, giving himself plenty. I think he's set for a massive game tonight, the big fella. Canberra coming on out. No Laurie Daly, no Ben Kennedy. Kennedy, of course, called up to the origin side. Mullins, Nagus, Williamson, Schrader in the centres. Vayner, Colo, McClendon, McFadden. Pearson, Ferner, Croker. Ricky in the front row, Wolf and Corvo. The interchanges, Finch, Burnham, Jusay, DeVico, and coached by the big fella, Meninga. And, of course, Ruben Wicking is the newest front rower to join the union. Just his second game there, Ray, but he has been used a fair bit in the back row by Mal Meninga. Looking to get him very involved tonight. An experienced customer, 111 first-grade games, 18 tests for the Kiwis. So he's been there and done that, but they'll be looking for him to lead the way. Nobody knows front row football better than the bloke on the sideline. As I said, basking in 10 degrees, Steve Roach. Yeah, sensational. Quite comfortable down here at the moment. Looking forward to seeing Lazarus's game. The Storm coming off a loss, and it's very rare that they lose two in a row. They'll be missing their origin players, but still have five internationals in their pack. Canberra, on the other hand, gets sides on the rack, but they fail to go on with it. 10 degrees, a light nor'easterly. Melbourne have won the toss and are running right to left. Live telecast from Bruce Stadium. Time for the national anthem, and tonight performed by David Pearson, who will be appearing as Captain Hook in Peter Pan which opens next month at the ANU Arts Centre. Here is David Pearson with the National Anthem. Australians, all let us rejoice, for we are young and free. With golden soil and wealth for toil, Australia fair in joyful strains then let us sing advance Australia fair David Pearson will play the, the part of Captain Hook in Peter Pan when it opens down here Brian Grant is the man with the whistle, and Dennis Spagarino is the video referee. Most important game. So it's time on with Canberra running from left to right, ushering in the start of a magnificent night of sport for you, with the cricket to follow the football at around about 9.30 tonight. So it's, it's the Melbourne Storm with Lazarus met by a willing Canberra defence, as you would expect in the opening exchanges. Third play of the night, and it's Nickow. 
In fact, there's only one of the Melbourne Storm pack who hasn't played international football. This is Kearney now. This is his first run-on game since uh, he was suspended way back at the start of the season. The kick, the first of the game from the boot of Kamali, and down it goes to Nagus coming away from his own 20-metre line. And there he's pulled down by Rua, who made his international debut for the Kiwis back at Stadium Australia on Anzac Day E. And the first penalty goes against the Storm, just about the whole team in front of the referee inside the 10 metres. Stephen Roach said that they very rarely lose two games in a row. In fact, it's only happened once in their short history. It was last year, 16, round 17. So they do bounce back very, very well. Williamson will find touch here. Just on the 40 metre mark. Williamson centre partner, David Schrader. They're using Brandon Pearson as lock forward tonight to fill the gap vacated by Ben Kennedy. They're just outside the 40-metre line now as the ball is played by Ruben Wickey and coming back and across. McFadden it was, using Pearson. Now Wolford. And the front row forward, number eight for Canberra, is Mark Corvo. Wolford then choosing to go down the blind side. McClendon, there was a decoy runner. And then the number 11 for Canberra, Jason Croker, is put away. Back at the cross now for McFadden to find Ruben Wickey again. Melbourne muscling up as they come onto the right of the ground. And a little kick, a neat kick by McFadden. Mullins is after it. Martin is knocked on in goal. Well, very lucky to get out of that one. The Melbourne Storm it was a, a nice little kick. Indecision back there from Martin. Mullins, well, he just didn't look. If he had looked up for the football, maybe he could have got it. Martin playing fullback tonight. And definitely knocking on. I don't quite know why he was arguing. Here's Pearson coming back. Tell him you help again. Hold it. Out wide to you. First tackle on the new set for Canberra. And, ooh, Ricky lost it. The ball went forward, came back. Now it's McFadden using McClendon. They had a tremendous combination going a fortnight ago when they played against and beat uh, Parramatta up at Parramatta Stadium. Now McClendon turning it back in. Wolford across. Ferner is with it. And this uh, workhorse from Canberra, David Ferner, plays the ball. For Wolford to go across to Corvo and then Mullins. Mullins is very close. Ten metres away, in fact, as they go on to the final play. McFadden rolls it in. Croker was flying. Martin scooped it up. Didn't grasp the football. And Ben is grounded anyway. So it'll be a line dropout. He's had a very busy initiation to fullback Tony Martin. There's some fine play early in the match by Canberra attacking the Melbourne Storm line. And that's a great little kick from McFadden. And Tony Martin, this occasion, hands to the ball and nearly got out. A good attempt, but some strong defence. They're putting on plenty of angle running, plenty of uh, decoy running as well, the Canberra side, really testing the Melbourne defence. Good work by Ken Nagus in particular. So the Raiders have had all of the possession, all of the territory, and Brandon Pearson has been told to play the ball. That's Luke Williamson, a dummy half. Ricky on his third hit up. Centre of the ground. Corbo again. He and Wiki, the props, working hard, sharing the load. Now we go across for the halves to bring a wide forward into the play. It's Croker, now Ferner, back and down for McClendon. Mark playing it now. Just inside that 20 metre line, they go down the corridor on the short side. Play back by Schrader, and now it is McFadden. Going back down the blind side, Nagus, broke out. Schrader's over. Schrader's in to score. It looked a forlorn hope that they would be able to generate something down the short side. But quick hands, bodies in motion, and Canberra are in for the first try of the game. And the 22-year-old gets a try in his first grade debut, and it's nice lead-up play. As they go back and see that there is a little bit of shortage in numbers there. Asiri Lang, was he was way too deep. And 
was well read by the halfback McFadden going back to the short blind side. Really, the Melbourne Storm got a bit lazy on the short side. By the time they reacted, it was too late. Yes, and terrible defence there by the Storm on their own line. They just had no no numbers there, and the people that were there didn't come up in one line. That just left massive gaps there for Canberra to run to. And well done to David Schrader. A big effort. First grade to Burn gets the first try. He joined the club last year. He's played lower grades for them. He's a junior rep player. And an exciting night for him already. Getting a four-pointer in the first five minutes of his hopefully long career. Well, they had everything going for them, Canberra. They had all the territory and all the possession, as I said. Being early in the game, though, I thought Melbourne might have been able to hold them out. Melbourne were asked to make 29 tackles against seven in that period of time leading up to the try. I don't want to put the mock on this bloke, Ray, but it's a long time since I've seen a goal kicker strike them as sweetly as this bloke. Good young kicker, 80% success rate. Hits the ball beautifully. Well, you might as well tell the whole story. There it is, just clearing the crossbar. So the try converted, Canberra leading Melbourne after seven minutes, 6 nil. We're back in a moment. Australia takes on India in Cricket's World Cup tonight. Prices you can't go past on Triton two-wheel drive cab chassis 17,990 with power steering and free tray. Great deals on Triton four-wheel drive and express van and seven-seater Nimbus from 36,990. The Mitsubishi end of financial year sale now on. It is Mitsubishi. My network, the football from Canberra. Broke up. to the halfway Corvo leading Pearson Wolford little kick is down to Marcus by comes out of his corner losing his footing driven down by Ferner and McFadden a night made for you sporting buff Cricket, Australia, India from the Oval follows the football tonight. And I hope you've got plenty of refreshments by your side. Big match for us, the Super Sixers. And we play the Indians tonight. Mullins back on his 10. 6 nothing to score. Mullins! Nothing is better to watch in rugby league than Mullins. And away from a shoulder charge from Nickow. Brilliant run down to the 40 metre line. Former Australian fullback McFadden. Swaying around the boot laces, bowing over the top. Is there anything more exciting, Peter? Oh, he's an athlete, isn't he? And he's battled with injury for a number of seasons, but he told us on the free show last night that's no drama now. That is. Pretty much the first mistake from Ken for tonight. Malmany could not have hoped for a better start. I will tell you something, though, Pete. Oh, he's struggling on. with it. I think he's done a hemi at some stage in this brilliant run. This is the Brett Mullins of old, the 92, 93, 94 years, where he was the king of the fullbacks, played for Australia, striding out, plenty of speed, plenty of evasive capabilities. Eventually they got him, but uh, he's struggling now with injury. So Melbourne. Yeah, that's actually seen him move out onto the wing. He's playing on the left wing at the moment, or he's at marker, but Mullins just gone out for a little bit of a rest to make sure things are okay. Kenny Nagus will drop back into the fullback role. Rua. Brought down on his own 40 metre line. Look at the time in possession. They really had to score, I suppose. Well, we've got a forward pass here to Tuera Nickow. He's not happy with the call. Came from the touch judge and the crowd. But I think they got it right. I think Swain just marginally put it in front of his lock forward. They haven't had much possession and they've wasted some there. 10 degrees in Canberra. 
This is round 14. Stay there, stay on the 20. Canberra, of course, are walking the tightrope, aren't they, as we start to eat away at the competition. Williamson and McClendon putting it together nicely, as they would have at rehearsals. There they are, Canberra 13, Melbourne 18, 10th and 3rd respectively. Still plenty of rounds to go, Ray, but I think it's already being shown that at the end of the season, the battle for 6th, 7th and 8th positions, it's going to be a dogfight. And the important points may well be during this representative stage of the season. There's another mistake from the Raiders sees Len Lazarus pick up. Ugh. There's some mistakes starting to creep into the Canberra game. And yes, the Canberra game. After a perfect start, now they're starting to give Melbourne a little smell. The 15 is Evans. Swain waiting. And coming down a wide blind side. And this is Paul Marquette coming off the bench tonight. With Williams and Marquette and Rorty. You say is on for Corvo, DeVico's on for Wiki. Melbourne pressing. 15 out from the line. For Morley for Hill, there's the little kick. And it's too deep tonight. But how many tries have they scored off it? It's one of their favourite tactics, and Scott Hill does it pretty well normally. This one, though, was a pressure ball. They were right on him, and he had, had little time to kick that one. And too much weight. And uh, Brett Mullins is still struggling out there on the wing. Ken Magus has gone back to fullback. The Mullins. Has come off. And Brett, Brett Finch has gone on. Interesting young player, the son of Robert, who played with the St George side many years ago. A very, very good player, Robert Finch. See the kick now from the Raiders. Only good meters over the head of. I think it's going to find touch behind Marcus Boy. We had a hit of golf today with the coach Mel Meninga, and we asked him about young Finch. And he's got a, a big rap on him. He says he's a player of the future. And he's kept him away from the press this week to make it a little bit easier tonight. The Raiders and the Storm players, you'll notice, are wearing yellow armbands to show their support for Care Australia. Steve Pratt and Peter Wallace who are being held captive in Yugoslavia. And, of course, Branko Yellen, the Canadian humanitarian aid workers, as you know, in jail in Yugoslavia. That's why the two clubs are wearing yellow armbands tonight. The scrum back on the Storm 10-metre line. And the four for Melbourne is Aaron Mule. His partner tonight is Paul Bell, who's no stranger to first grade. This is Evans. And Bell back from a month. Mullins, Mullins heading for the dressing rooms. Sorry, Ray. Bell's been out for a month with uh, a shoulder problem. One of the players returning tonight, along with Scott Hill, who missed last week's game against the Dragons. His nick out takes it forward. Lack of support there on his outside. This kick going down towards McClendon, who's back as custodian at the moment. He might even have to stay there. Nagus is with it now. He'll use McClendon and does. Not frightened to pass it. Vainicolo and Mule and Evans are there to bring him down. That's the 10-metre line out from Canberra's try line. Six middles to score. With Schrader getting the try. Vainicolo. Williamson again finding himself a dummy half. Finch is playing on the right wing. Clinton has gone back to full back, as I said. What's the story on Brett Mullins, Steve? Yeah, as you know, very slippery conditions here. He, he slipped over and he's done a hamstring, so they're just having a look at him now. He should be back. McFadden's kick. And this is a Siri Lang, who spent a good portion of his career playing for the Western Suburbs Magpies. Martin. 6-0 came at the sixth minute of the game when Canberra had all the ball and they put on a converted try. Bowden with uh, some strapping going on that uh, left thigh muscle. Lazarus. Rorty's on, Bowden's off, as we just showed you. 
And they put a charge together down the short side for Marquette. So now Melbourne attack. Inside the 20, the kick is across the ground. They're looking for Marcus By, but oh! Lee Nicola was right up there. From a standing start, he did magnificently. The volcano went right up. Yeah, Kamali would have liked that one to have been deeper, closer to the try line. Might not have made any difference. Got good body position. His body between the ball and the chaser. And took it easily on the chest. It's Brandon Pearson takes a 35 out. 12 in from touch. Jason Burnham in 15. Croker bursting through. And Burnham it is. Now McClendon. David Ferner was held back there. Should have been a penalty. Burnham again. McFadden lobbing it down and finding the line. They're playing very well, aren't they, in attack uh, Canberra. Some of their pet plays coming out tonight. The Raiders play where they sort of uh, have a cut out and switch it back to the inside. Croker made the half bust on that occasion. All backed up by Burnham. He was called basically from oblivion by Mal Meninga to fill some gaps, wasn't he? I was reading a story about him in Rugby League Week, I think. Jason Burnham. I think you'll also find that he's the coach of the Erindale College side that has had so much success in junior football. The products have come through into the grades here as good run here from a Siri Lang. DeVico in 17. Evans again. Working hard. Lazarus. All the talk about next Wednesday is that it'll be a capacity crowd. I'm here to tell you there are some good seats available still at Stadium Australia. Melbourne! Oh, he had a chance! Paul Bell! He couldn't get a catch on it. Yeah, a great bust from Scott Hill. First time he's decided to run the football tonight. Got on the outside of Croker. He had four goes at that one, Bell. And it's ended up on the deck. Missing his first home game for the Raiders tonight is the patriarch of rugby league in this area, Les McIntyre. 84 years of age, had a hip operation yesterday and asked could he be allowed out to watch the game tonight. Les, you're kidding. But God bless you. And I hope you enjoy the telecast. Burnham. They've got the blindside stack, quick passing, short passing. And Williamson. Canberra 16 as Ducey, the Frenchman. Five gone. Referee Brian Grant, Brian Grant coaching out there. No penalties. He's singing out. No penalties. Lang. Kamali. Martin. Looking at his headgear on Tony Martin. I might buy a similar one for either McFadden or McClendon. Oh, Jesus, it make things easier. Stand up, stand up, stand up. Bell. 16 for Melbourne is Rorty. Swain. Swain looking for a regather. McFadden had to put on the power. Canberra coming off their own 10 metre line. Now their 20 metre line. Williams is on. Nikau is off. Steve Roach on the sideline. Yeah, I've got to say, I'm a little bit uh, worried about Melbourne's defence tonight. I'm used to seeing them at home and being very aggressive and usually dominating. They're letting far too many offloads go. And the message has just come from the bench to hold Canberra down a little bit longer. The week out. Broke up. And a penalty goes to the Canberra side. Ten metres right across. You're going out too early, buddy. Hey? He's penalised the marker. Speaking to Kamali, that's Hill on camera. That ticker tech number for those seats at Stadium Australia, there are a good range of tickets still available. So if somebody's telling you that there's going to be a capacity crowd, there well may be, but you can still get tickets. And I'll put the number up on the screen for you in just a moment. 
Wiki. 9266 4800. 9266 4800 for tickets for next Wednesday. Wolford. Away now, and oh, Finch's pass has gone Melbourne bound. Martin, Marcus by, Marcus by, another one of rugby league's crowd pleasers. Rorty, Roan from the crowd for the tackle. From the Canberra player, number 10 it was, Ricky. Danny Williams. There's a good chance for Camper at the other end of the field. The good news, Brett Mullins looks like he'll be coming back into the action as the storm go wide. Scott Hill again throws the little dummy. Tackle 31 out. Kamali. Ricky underneath, Ferner over the top. They miss Scott Hill when we televised the St George game last weekend. Here's Hill's kick across the ground. And Vainicolo tackled by the number four, who must have only just been onside. I thought he was offside, to be honest with you. This is Wiki. Working hard, Ruben Wiki. He's probably better off there than anywhere. He can, he can go missing as Mullins comes back. Big and strong, Corvo. Burnham. Shot there. It was Kamali. Touch judge had an open view on it. He was of the opinion that was around the chest. I will say on Grant's behalf, he didn't have a sight on it. Of course, everybody's living in an expectation of send-offs this weekend. Martin. Well, hang on, Ray. We've got the touch judge on now. He's played some sort of advantage, I suppose. What have we got, Paul? Here's the shot. Over here. Which number, mate? Seven. Well, why wouldn't you come straight on for that? I, I don't understand the advantage play again. Well, particularly when he's gone to ground tackle. Just relax. Yeah. You've lost any yeah. advantage. Yeah, OK. No, we're not looking at that. Paul's 10 metres away, so I oh, want the okay. story. Yeah, the player's come in with this one now, OK? It's hit the play right around the throat area. Yes. Okay. All right. OK. okay. No, mate, it's not in your game, so therefore it slipped up. Well, if it comes in yeah, contact with his neck, it's no good. It's All right? Good. It's not in your game, so we're the penalty. There's no report. We play the game. Cheers. I think Kamali's right, you know. I've got a feeling it might have made first contact with the shoulder. It was certainly not a vicious tackle. Certainly wasn't of uh, the enormity of what we saw last Sunday. Here it is again. It hit him on the left shoulder and bounced up. Yeah, that, that's fair enough. If he is going to give a penalty, he's got to come straight on in that situation. Oh, mate, the touch judge, I think he blew it. Should have come and should have come on when the tackle had been completed. Corvo now. He didn't face goal goal. I suppose if you're nitpicking, he could have penalised him. Ricky. The cricket Australia India will follow the league telecast. Massive night of sport for you on the nine network around Australia. Wolford wrestling himself free. Ricky. Close to the line. Wolford, McFadden, oh, Burnham out wide has put it down, and the advantage goes across to Melbourne. Another that chance, is Bell. Another chance there for the Canberra Raiders. There's been no smarter player tonight for them than Simon Wolford. He's been very busy around the rucks, creating plenty of opportunities. Just had to catch that one. There was a chance on the outside. Two, wait inside again, David. Wait for two. Kamali turning it in for Marquette. Now Martin running off Kirby. Away for Bell. On his outside is Lang. Lang down the right side. Back off the shoulder of Bell. And picked up there by Rorty. Referee says it went backwards. Play on. William. Kamali. Hill. Bowden's outside him. Bowden getting a pass away, Marquette couldn't take it. It's a penalty. 15, 10 minutes, well, Penalty that, to Melbourne. Well, that was good advantage played by the referee. We will see Melbourne put first points on the board by 
blocking this over. And finally, we've seen Melbourne show some spark in attack. And Stephen Kearney heavily involved. They swept to the right-hand side. Pass went astray, but Rorty did well to clean up. Tracked a couple of defenders, popped it to Martin, on to Bell. Bell short to Lang. Lang didn't have enough speed to get around Kenny Nags, but he got the pass back inside. It was a knockback, and Rorty did a good job to stay in the field of play. And then the referee did play good advantage. The tackle was completed. He gave the, the penalty and the chance for Kamali to put on their first points. No Matt Geyer tonight. One of three Melbourne players on origin duty. So the penalty is there. First points on the board for Melbourne. They're trailing 6-2 at the 26th minute. Prepare yourself for Mortal Kombat Sunday. I landed on Regent Street, play McDonald's, McMatch and win Monopoly. Peel up a game sticker from a large coat, large fries, hot apple pie or hash brown pack, and you can win big prizes instantly. Like Honda, HRB Sports, $50,000 cash from Aussie Home Loans, family holidays to Disneyland flying Air New Zealand, Samsung Entertainment System, PlayStation Platinum Packs, and McDonald's food prizes. Look, match and win Monopoly. Stick around. This is going to be big. Welcome back live to the National Capital. We're broadcasting from the beautiful Bruce Stadium. And as I said the last time we were here, Whoever is responsible for this, you are to be congratulated. Hill down the left side. Marcus By stayed on the outside. I'm surprised he didn't go back inside. Kamali to the air. Very, very high. Allowed to bounce by both teams. Battered down by Melbourne. Mullins has got the ball for Canberra. Mullins is away. Marcus By rounds him up. Gets it to Vainicolo. And Vainicolo is brought down. Broker. Here's Lenore. That was a good shot. Marcus by. Wolford. Ricky. McFadden. Burnham. And he's played the advantage again. Uh, well, he called Stephen Kearney offside. And I don't know how the Blake was ever going to get onside. It, it went two passes. And he eventually blew against him. He is doing plenty of coaching out there, the referee, at the moment. Oh, God. I tell you what, he's talking more than us. Well, the kicking game from Melbourne hasn't been that good tonight. And really, on these occasions, the last person you want the ball to bounce into is Brett Mullins. He went away, realised that Marcus Bai was going to pick him up, so he found Vainicolo. At the end of this six, he's called Stephen Kearney offside. Now, Kearney does stay back. He stays out of it, stays out of it. That's a bad penalty. It that is. Really, uh, what, just, just say they make a break there, Canberra, and Kearney runs and pulls him down from a metre out. Is he still going to call him offside? Well, I don't know. Does Stephen Kearney, oh. does he turn around and run back three or four metres and then come oh. back up? What do you think? Now, this kick for Luke Williamson, just outside the 20 metre line, and he's right on the 20 metre line, in from touch on the far side of Bruce Stadium. Williamson, one from one so far, make it two from two. So it is Canberra extending their lead. They are eight, Melbourne are two. We've had half an hour of football. Enter a conspiracy that's all too real. The Pretender, Saturday. Prices you can't go past. The multi award winning Mirage from 15190 with air. Lancer GLI Coupe 18490 with air. And Lancer GLI Sedan 2490 drive away with air. At the Mitsubishi end of financial year sale, now on. It is Mitsubishi. Ruben Wiggy making a half break as we welcome you back to Bruce Stadium. Round 14, Canberra versus Melbourne. And Corvo hammers the ball up. Canberra leading 8 2 over Melbourne. 
the highly placed Melbourne in a little bit of trouble as McClendon rolls it nicely Martin will get back or does he No, he doesn't he got back and then got pushed back into the end goal yeah he got back and then got hammered in a strong tackle the Canberra kicking game tonight has been a lot better than Melbourne's and Brett Mullins once again this is his third clean break of the night that's just awful defense as the streaky fullback gets through and makes 40 easy meters and lovely kick from McClendon and Martin he, he looked like he was a chance to get out and Wooshka he got hammered back by Nagus he's having a fine game too that man Ken Nagus his chase his chase on the kicks has been enormous yeah, he's been wonderful all year Melbourne are in some trouble just looking through the stats again they've on every occasion they've been behind at halftime this year they've got beaten Ruben Wiki. Half an hour gone. Corvo shouldering a lot of the load. Canberra pressing. 20 metres out. Wolford. Burner! To the blind. McClendon and McFadden. The Junior Burgers! your ball out there the young centre smiles all round and again it's the 5-8 his sleight of hand he goes wide gets the pass down as we freeze it there you can see by throwing the dummy he's actually attracted two defenders and that opens something up on the outside and as play continues he slips around the outside of Kamali he's able to hold off the tackle of Bell and then Schrader, he didn't have much to do to, to get the ball over the line, despite the fact there were two in attendance. Well, I reckon he's only touched the ball twice tonight, David Schrader, with two tries. So well done. It, it, it's all for defence once again. They had the numbers there, but you've got to put them on the deck. Gee, that's not the Melbourne defence that we are used to. Brett Kamali, totally bamboozled by the dummy. Then it's a poor tackle from Bell. He's not a particularly big man, McClendon, but he shrugged him off easily. And Tony Martin, the fullback, he doesn't even get a touch on the try score. Well, mate, I think he, he got his knee. He's having a horror night, Martin. He'll be very happy to hand the number one shirt back to Robbie Ross. He's been playing very well, Martin, in the centres. But you've got to call a spade a spade. He's having an unhappy night here tonight. Williamson. Ten in from touch. He hasn't had a simple one. He's 20 out, looking to convert at 12-2. And here it comes again, Williamson. It's away this time. So it is 12-2, Canberra over Melbourne. Steve Roach on the sideline. Well, I've got to say, I've been very disappointed with the Melbourne Storm's form tonight. The defence hasn't been there from the opening 10 minutes. Here's the perfect example of it. McLinden able to stand in a tackle, and Strader gets over the line. Only his second touch. Wayne Acolo. Taken down by Williams. Corvo. I wish Brian Grant would drop off for a while. I mean, these are growing men, and honestly, how many times do you have to tell them to stand up? Every tackle? Come on. I think he's made his point by now. Pearson. Wolford through now for Ricky. Ricky just into opposition's territory, as you can see. Wolford's having a tremendous game. McClendon's pass floating backwards. Did it come off a hand, Peter? It uh, came off Scott Hill, but he didn't play at it. Well, if he didn't play at it, it'll be a Melbourne feed. Let's well, watch it. Well, he's giving a Canberra feed, I think. I don't think he, he didn't play at it at all. I think he was just going for the tackle. Well, he's given the feed to, to Canberra. The appeal went up from Mark McClendon. And that was a call from the touch judge. The touch judge has said that Scott Hill went for the football, not just attempting the tackle. Here's Schrader again. His confidence very, very high. 14 is Finch, and now Ferner. Ferner! 20 metres out from the line. Wolford. 
putting Pearson up the middle. Chance here for Canberra again. They're right up against the try line. Jusay. Now Wolfe. Long pass. Finding Finchie. Rolls it on the ground. Into the end goal. And they get it back to you. Well, well, sorry, Ray, under enormous pressure here in the storm. It's Marcus Fyre looking to get involved, trying to spark something. Well, this is the form they showed last week, didn't they, Pete, against the George Illawarra. Not much happened for them on that night. It's, it's a week later, but it could be the same match. Well, I don't think they, they're they playing as well as they as they did. Well, they, they were just awful last, last week. No better tonight. And I thought, never thought I would say that they were soft in defence, but that's the kind of first-half performance tonight. Well, that's basically what was echoed by their coach, Chris Anderson, when they pulled the shutters down on last Friday. I think his words were they were very, very unlike Melbourne. Oh. Well, Mullins has put his first blemish on a wonderful game so far for him. Four minutes from the break, and Mullins who's done some amazing things, knocks on a chance for Melbourne. And they need to score, don't they, before half-time. Um, Canberra is happy to go in with this lead. I don't think, they think Melbourne could catch them. Mule. That's taken nothing away from Canberra. They've got a great start and they've gone on with it. They're here to play tonight. Scott Hill trying to get something going. Kamali, they're running out of players. Bell's out there on his own. Taken down by Schrader, the scorer of two tries, both the Canberra tries to the young centre. Lazarus rolling it down, and a penalty goes to Melbourne. Just roll, no, too slow in there. Well, that's the first penalty against Canberra, and I don't know, we're a long way away here, but I just thought Ben Lazarus lost that ball. In fact, well, Melbourne, Melbourne does a langer. Close to the line. They would love to invade the Canberra in goal. Lazarus. Kamali switches it. Nickow. Swade. Kamali. Heavy tackle by Wolford. Some help from Devico. Now Nickow. Short ball for Evans. Good defence, Canberra. Williamson and Ferner. Now Hill, he's dangerous here. Yes, what a pass. Oh, he's got it forward. It has gone forward according to Grant. But the length of the pass was perfect from Hill. Watch it here on the high shot. There's nothing wrong with by. It must have been pass forward. And the referee, I've got to say, had a perfect position on it. Negus. The other great quality so far about this Canberra performance is the fact that they've had to do some makeshift changes with the problems that they're having. We've got McFadden out on the wing. We've got Schrader out on the wing. They didn't start there. There's another penalty for them. With Mullins going off, we've seen Nagus back at fullback and McClendon. Next Wednesday, of course, we come to you at 7.30 live from Stadium Australia. The state of origin to the harvey norman state of origin live at 7 30 across australia and uh, overseas on the national nine network you say second frenchman only to play top league in australia the other played for penrith the man by the name of molinaire wolford 39th minute mcfadden Croker, Ferner, Ferner, brushing them away. Wolford again, McFadden joins in. DeBico loses behind him. Croker, Croker, ball knocked down by Melbourne. Knocked backwards for them, and it's play on. Good refereeing by Grant there. And that was a dead set try-saving knockdown. 
as Marcus Boyd takes it outside the 20. I think the pass would have found a player going back inside and getting to the line. Penalty to Melbourne now against Mullins for taking the ball off a player already tackled. One on one situation doesn't apply there. 5 3 the penalties to Canberra. And this will just about take us to half time. One set of six. They kick on the first. Martin's chasing the Kamali kick. Might have come off the fingertips of Martin. He's gone in to take a try. But Greg will go for the video referee. I'm thinking that he might have got a hand on it, Martin. Yeah, I think so, right. A little shake of the head now. He's, he's telling the players it's not a try. He definitely got a touch on it. Was he onside? That's the other question. He's onside as far as I'm concerned, but I think he gets some fingers on this. Yeah. The Dennis Bagarino is watching it. The fingers of Martin are being watched. And you'd have to think that he got a touch on it. Yeah, that's not... It's not definite, is it? But his reaction says it is. He hasn't scored this try, and he knows it. He believes that he's got a little touch on that. It's almost impossible to tell. And Dennis Spagarino, how would, how would you tell? Well, he I may... suppose the benefit of the doubt will go to the defensive side, will it? But if he's watching the same replays as we are, it's, it's dead set. You cannot tell whether he he's might, touched it or not. He may well hand it back for the referee's call. I would say it's impossible for anybody to say that he did or he didn't touch it. And he's gone back to the referee. What are you, what are you doing? He's ruled a knock on. Spagarino has gone back to referee Brian Grant. And the try has been denied as uh, typified by the face of Glenn Lazarus. He's saying, did you see that? They leave the ground. It's been a tremendous half of football for Canberra with young David Schrader getting two tries on first grade debut. Williamson's been kicking well. Melbourne's been playing badly. It is 12-2 at halftime. The Raiders over the storm as we take a break. And reminding you of Sports Saturday tomorrow, a magnificent show hosted by Nicole Stevens. Tomorrow on Sports Saturday, Cricket's World Cup gets serious as the Super Six battle for the prize. We'll have all the highlights of tonight's match between Australia and the big scoring boys from India. Plus, former test skipper Mark Taylor will be along to analyse what waits in store for the top contenders. From the red dust of Roland Garros, Grand Slam tennis with highlights of the men's semi-finals. When it came to role models, Matt Rogers has the best in his dad, Steve. We'll meet the father and son sharks who both became kangaroos and go behind the scenes of both state of origin caps. As the Wallabies prepare for their biggest season ever, we'll meet the bolter of Rod McQueen's new squad, Jim Williams, and put you in the saddle for Group 1 racing at Eagle Farm on Oaks Day at the Brisbane Winter Carnival. So be there when the winners parade, all afternoon long, tomorrow on Sports Saturday. Featuring once again at the bottom of the table, a hungry manly are planning roast rooster for Sunday lunch. Watch the feathers fly when the seagulls clash with the roosters. Manly take on Sydney City Sunday football on Win Television. I landed on Regent Street playing McDonald's McMatch and win Monopoly. Peel off a game sticker from a large coat, large fries, hot apple pie or hash brown pack, and you can win big prizes instantly. Like Honda, HRV Sports, $50,000 cash from Aussie Home Loans, family holidays to Disneyland flying Air New Zealand, Samsung Entertainment System, PlayStation Platinum Packs, and McDonald's food prizes. With match and win Monopoly, stick around. This is going to be big. 
Card Warehouse brings you the best brands during our Price Buster sale. British Paints, five litres for the price of four. New vinyl, 39.45. Four seasons, 39.95. From Australia's number one home improvement centre, it's all here at Card Warehouse. This is Brian Wen, and he's not winning races anymore. But throughout June, he swears no one will come near him on prices because he has men's Adidas Universals for $99, women's Asics DS Trainers $99, men's New Balance M701s $59, women's Brooks Vapors $89, Asics Propel X $69, and Asics Prodigies $69. No one will come near me on prices. Brian swears it. The Runner Shop June Sale, Dundas Court, Philip. This weekend in the Sunday Telegraph, you'll get an official Star Wars Phantom Menace poster free. It's big, it's glossy, and it's exclusive. So to avoid an intergalactic battle at your place, it'll be worth getting more than one. Free Star Wars Phantom Menace poster, only in the Sunday Telegraph. Sunday, Sunday isn't Sunday, it's without the Sunday Telegraph. Los Angeles, 1984. Australian tuna fisherman Dean Lucan creates Olympic history to win Australia's first ever weightlifting gold. At our games, there'll be great Olympic moments every day, so be there to share them. Because all you have to do is send in the ticket order form from the official Olympic Games ticket book, which you'll find in Wednesday's Daily Telegraph. Get your ticket orders in quick, because if you're one of the first 50,000 to order, you'll receive this special edition Olympic Games pin. Pins from previous Olympic Games have become collector's items and some are now extremely valuable. It's not the same if you're not there. So get in early and receive your Olympic Games collectible pin. Just in time for the Queen's birthday weekend, Fred's Fireworks are clearing huge containers of the most amazing fireworks at bargain prices. Family packs start at a low $20. Get a big bang for your buck at Fred's Fireworks Australian Heritage Village Watson. Open till midnight, seven days. When you need a delicious breakfast, the only place to go is McDonald's. Well, once I had 27 hotcakes in one go. That's nothing. I ate 30 for three hash browns. As if. Phone 1902 552 500. The more times you call, the more opportunity you have of playing Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? A million dollars up for grabs. Weeknights 5.30 on Win Television. Welcome back live to Bruce Stadium and to a 12-2 scoreline in favour of the Raiders over the Storm. A very good first half performance and you can see they had a mountain of possession, 60% of it. Held on to it well, 16 from 23, the completion rate and the line break, 6-2. A few of those made by Brett Mullins from fullback. And I think the biggest concern for the Storm coach, Chris Anderson, the missed tackle count, 12-6. to six, And a lot of the tackles have been fairly soft along with those misses. And I've got to say, Paul Vorton, I used the word soft earlier. We haven't used that before for Melbourne, but it's a concern. A lot of busts up the middle by the, the Raiders. Yeah, they've been awful tonight, the Melbourne Storm. You've got to give Canberra all the credit and their coach, Mel Meninga. Mel coaches in a fashion that... They play a lot of angles, a lot of inside balls and inside passes, and that's where they're carving out Melbourne tonight, right through the middle of the ruck. Kicking game has been very good from the Canberra team as well. McFadden and McClendon putting a lot of pressure on. We saw that in the opening minutes. Tony Martin back at fullback for the first time, put under plenty of pressure. Yeah, I mean, he's handled it pretty well most of the time, Tony Martin. Of course, normally a centre, he has had some fullback experience, but on that occasion, I mean, there was nothing doing, no communication whatsoever between any of the Storm players, and lucky to get out of that one. Now, Mal Meninga's made a couple of positional changes. We see Pearson into lock forward. A youngster, Schrader, making his first grade debut. And it's, it's a wonderful thing. Your first touch in the top grade, you get over after six minutes. David Schrader's had, had a dream start to his first grade debut. And uh, this was it. This is the first time he's touched the ball in first grade. It was pretty ordinary defence once again from the Melbourne Storm. As Siri Lang hadn't read it too well at all. And he was left lamenting as Schrader just dived over for the first Canberra try. And they deserved it. And you mentioned Brandon Pearson having a whale of a game as Brandon in the lock forward position. So too, Brett Mullins at fullback. No. He's just cut them up at will. Unfortunately picked up a hamstring injury after one of his brilliant bursts. Something like 60 metres again from a kick return. I think nearly every time he's touched the ball tonight, Brett Mullins, he's made terrific ground for them. This is the initial burst that he made. Just fantastic, and as I said during the call, this is shades of Brett in the early to mid 90s, a long striding fullback that he is. He's had a few injury problems of late, but uh, he looks like he's back to his best. 
the Raiders really haven't been put under any pressure. Not a lot of use of the football from the Storm in their 20 metre area. And their kicking game, once they have got down there, it just hasn't, la it's lacked the pinpoint accuracy we've seen normally associated with Brett Kamali. Well, normally you see Kamali and Hill just uh, kicking for the wings. Hasn't been the case tonight, but on this occasion, uh, not enough depth in the kick. And uh, it was, you know, it's 10 metres out, and that's an easy one for Vayner Carlo to take under pressure from Vi. But as I said, he turned his body and protected the football. I think I'm right in saying that young McClendon is a representative for Australia in the touch football game. We saw evidence of that leading up to David Schrader's the second try. Beautiful slide of hand. Brett Kamali still doesn't know where he went. I know. McClendon is just a, a really good player. Shades of, I reckon, you at your best, Pete. A young Peter Sterling for me because he's got all the skills. Kicking, he can defend, and he's got this slide of hand. Look at that. Beautiful. Uh, in and away. A dummy. And then a bit of power. He changed the ball back to his right arm and pushed off Paul Bell, who's a noted defender in the past. Let me tell you, he's no easy meat. And then a pretty disgraceful attempt from Tony Martin. But Schrader, he, uh, two starts for two tries. Now, Belford's closest opportunity came with Marcus By crossing out wide. The referee was in good position to call a forward pass against Scott Hill. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to tell from the angle that we've seen on this. But uh, Scott Hill, this is a Wally Lewis-type bullet pass. It's a 20-metre job. Wooshka, away it goes. Now, obviously, it went forward because the referee, as uh, Ray Warren said, was in good position. That was Melbourne's best and I might say only chance to score points in that first half. They've trailed at halftime three occasions this year. They've lost every game in the Storm. They're heading for number four. I don't think they can win an IP. Not the way they're playing. They would have to have, uh, have a complete reversal. I will say this. Everything has gone right for the Canberra Raiders in the penalty count and uh, they haven't dropped the ball too many times. It's been all Canberra but Melbourne, a big effort to come back tonight. Yeah, I think Chris Anderson will rev the, the Melbourne side up at halftime. Don't forget on Sunday, of course, more Rugby League with the footy show. Our guest host this weekend, Phil Gould, will be joined by Jeff Toovey, Brian Fletcher. Also the referee's boss, Mick Stone, our legend of league, the great Brett Kenny. That's at 11 o'clock. And that afternoon, we're off to Brookvale for the round 14 clash. The Eagles playing host to the Roosters out at Brookie. That will be a beauty as well. But a very good second half coming up here at the National Capital. 12-2 at the moment in front. The Raiders in front of the Storm. We'll be back in just a moment with all the second half action. Tuesday, back-to-back -back Aussie drama. They've had the affair. They are about to sound like my mother. Well, obviously you didn't listen to her either. Now it's the most unusual chemistry. Well, it's got a mass as better at kissing chicks. Water rats. Oh, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Then at 9.30. Snuff film. Victims murdered on camera. An urban myth. We've got a body here that says maybe it isn't. Threatens to expose their past. I don't know what to do. Stingers following Water Rats Tuesday on Win. When you need a delicious breakfast, the only place to go is McDonald's. Well, once I had 27 hotcakes in one go. That's nothing. I ate 30 for free hash browns. As if. Hardware House brings you the best brands during our Price Buster sale. British Paints, five litres for the price of four. New vinyl, 39.45. Four seasons, 39.95. From Australia's number one home improvement centre, it's all here at Hardware House. Mazda Bravo. Big on features. Ready to work with power steering standard. All new intercooled turbo diesel, the most powerful in its class. Variety of great models available. Only Bravo has Mazda comfort, style and performance. See your local Mazda dealer for a great deal on Mazda Bravo today. It's a real emergency. Thank you. Hey, they're on their way. Two large pizzas? Saved. Every cigarette is doing new damage. 
This is part of an aorta, the main artery from the heart. Smoking makes artery walls sticky and collect dangerous fatty deposits. This much was found stuck to the aorta wall of a smoker, age 32. Every cigarette is doing you damage. Rude? How rude! Rodney Rude, with more grunt. This is Rodney Rude at his best. It ain't McFries, it's chips. Catch Rodney Rude live at these venues. Tickets on sale now, don't miss out. We'll dream of better things. Our dream home. Well, wake up to a better home in the all-new display village designed exclusively by Canberra's best builders. Dream Street 2, proudly sponsored by Actu Corporation. Hardware House brings you the best brands at the very best prices during our Price Busters sale. This great value set of four car mats in grey, black or brown are crazy $9.95. From Australia's number one home improvement centre, it's all here at Hardware House. One phone call could put you on the way to one million dollars. Call now and be part of the excitement. Who wants to be a millionaire? 5.30 weeknights and win. Welcome back to Bruce Stadium. We're broadcasting live tonight, Friday Night Football, from the National Capital. And Canberra are looking comfortable at 12 points to two up over Melbourne. A disappointing performance by the Storm. And they have got some fans here too. Um, Canberra, if you, if you look back through its origins, I think they were all Victorians that first were based in Canberra. Let's have a look at the forwards work rate as um, the Canberra team goes back out. David Ferner, I still think he's unlucky not to have got a start in this uh, New South Wales State of Origin side. Still continues to play well. 15 tackles, 6 hit-ups. And the two stars for me, they've been Brandon Pearson with 7 and 11 hit-ups and Ruben Wickey. This uh, winger centre come front rower with 14 hit-ups. Well done to Ruben Wickey in the prop forward position tonight for the Melbourne side. Defence has been all the rage, hasn't it, for them tonight. It's been their main go and Swain, Bowden and Evans doing plenty in there. 10 degrees in Canberra. It's very interesting. They started here putting a, a, a giant mat across this ground. It's called the grow mat. And it creates a hothouse environment which allows the turf to grow better in this harsh, cold Canberra winter. They started it this week on Monday. In fact, the actual playing surface is about five degrees warmer than the extremities of the ground. It's a fairly detailed and complex thing to go into, but Canberra always trying to do something to provide a good surface. This is Wiki now on the first play of the second half. Ferner. Little handoff as Melbourne again failed to put the hand of the ball down. Mullins. Tremendous return to form in the first half for Brett Mullins. I think Paul mentioned that it was the Mullins of 1994 when he was setting the world on fire. Burner, little flick pass. Melbourne are just not putting the man with the ball on the ground. They're, they're tackling in ones, and when they do tackle in pairs, they're not making a complete job of it. 12 points to two then. As the ball is put on the boot, and it goes down over the head of Marcus By. He comes off his own line. And a good strong tackle by Canberra. Working out there, Luke Williamson on the right side of defence for Canberra. This is Martin. With Melbourne working it off their own line, let's go to Stephen now for his halftime report. Well, I'll tell you what, Chris Anderson, the Melbourne coach, wasn't real happy. He's worried that his team didn't cop the tip from last week's performance, and he wants every player to look at their own input in that first half. He said they need to really get straight into this game in the second half and really dominate in the first ten minutes. He said we're very lazy on the hit back when Canberra changed direction, and we must number up. It's up to ourselves to get ourselves back into the game. Now, Canberra's Mel Malinga, he said, look, no letting up. One of our big problems this year has been our low, below pass in the second half. He said, uh, keep putting pressure on Martin. He's not looking too comfortable at the back. And he said, Crea we're creating plenty of opportunities. Be confident. Points will come for us. Magus with a beautiful run. Supported then by, I think it was Corvo. Back into the centre. And little McFadden is away. They're not going to get him. McFadden goes in. Canberra score. Two minutes into the second half. Now you won't see too many better tries than this one this year. Wonderful stuff. The kind of 
performance that we saw from the Raiders when they were winning premierships eight, ten years ago. Flowing football, the kick to Ken Nagus, the one-on-one -on -one misses tonight. They've been shocking for the Melbourne Storm. Just ambles across field, steps inside, through Rua, pushes through another, lovely pass on the outside, back into Brett Mullins, he beats Martin, and then on to Young McFadden, and he's away. Martin chases in vain. 90 metres they've come. It's a wonderful play leading up to that four-pointer. You won't find a better kick return than this all season, will you? It's, it's great Canberra play. And Kenny Nagus, well, you talk about players who missed out on State of Origin. As I said, we played golf with Mel Meninga today. He was disappointed for Kenny that he didn't get a start on one of the wings. He's been in great form, he said, and this is the form that we're seeing tonight. After those two initial missed tackles, not a hand laid on the Canberra player, and McFadden just stride away to the line. Beautiful stuff there for Canberra. Well, I'll tell you what, Glenn Lazarus might be getting his team in a circle a lot earlier than he did last week. In fact, as you see the try again, they are in a circle behind the line. Unfortunately, that's where they've spent a little bit of time. Williamson gets his easiest attempt at conversion. So it's 16 to 2, it's about to become 18 to 2, and that's the score line. As the fans go up, we will go to a break and be back with you live at Bruce Stadium in just a moment. Prepare yourself for Mortal Kombat Sunday. Hey kids, look on the right. <laughs> look, there it is again. Hey, look, there it is again. <laughs> Look, there it is again. Oh, oh. Prices you can't go past. Pajero Escape from $49.90. Challenger from $38.990. And new Pajero EO from $26.990. All with alloy wheels, power windows, and air conditioning. The Mitsubishi End of Financial Year Sale. Now on. It is Mitsubishi. 18 to 2 as we welcome you back to Friday Night Football live tonight. Most times you see us on an hour delay. But tonight we're live to make provision and preparation for the World Cup of Cricket, Australia versus India tonight. Immediately following the football, we will take you through, including the football and the cricket, about eight and a half hours of sport on the sports leader, the wide world of sports on nine, and it's Shane Warne versus Sachin Tendulkar tonight. To bring out the excitement in Richie. Kamali. Wrestle there. Rua bouncing away from Brandon Pearson. Wiki gave chase and made a bootlace tackle. Bowden comes back into the ruck. Wiki gets him as well, gets it away. Now Canberra are tackling a bit like Melbourne. Ineffective stuff. Played by Bill. The only difference was, Ray, Melbourne didn't go anywhere. He must finish on the same blade of grass. Was that knocked out? The referee says no. There has been a, a distinct lack of support play by the Melbourne Storm tonight. There's a chance there for Koenig to offload, but no one to give it to. The three-man tackle on the ball just came loose. There's well, another great opportunity for the Raiders here. It came loose because Simon Wolf had knocked it out. So everything is swinging Canberra's way. McClendon. Probably playing second fiddle tonight to McFadden. Only a personal opinion. Fernat. I'm sure one thing Mel Meninga would have reminded his team at half time was that they had match winning leads against both Auckland and of course last week against Sydney City. Pearson. Problem there I think for Bowden. Croker. Put on his back by Kearney. Corbo. Offload. Ricky. Ricky then. Takes them to the 10 metre line. Canberra another chance. Three tries on the board already. The two Max get together again. Williamson down the right flank. Turnover. I'll give you that ticker tech number again in just a moment. Where tickets and some good seats are available for Stadium Australia on Wednesday. 
there will be a massive crowd there, but there are seats available. That's the point we're trying to emphasize tonight. Don't be frightened off by that full house story that's doing the rounds. It's not yet. Let's make it a full house, though. 9266 4800. 9266 4800. It'll be a record crowd for State of Origin, almost certainly. And the telecast at 7.30 live, the Harvey Norman State of Origin 2 telecast, 7.30 live. As Canberra come up with the ball, and it and is with Melbourne. Corvo, but Brian Grant is going to put Thanks, a scrum down. There's some better play there from the Melbourne Storm. Glenn Lazarus, uh, he's been one to put his hand up tonight. Some good, strong barging runs by him. He got them 15 or 20 metres, and they, they spread it. And there's a Canberra hand in here which knocks it down, hence the scrum and the feet to the Melbourne Storm. We're talking of Glenn Lazarus. He got his players together last uh, Friday night and apologised. Openly apologised for his performance, claiming that he cost them any chance of victory. This is very, uh, very modest Glenn Lazarus, a very disappointed captain last Friday. He doesn't have to apologise ever, I don't think, to anybody. Penalty goes to Melbourne, bit of a scuffle up. Yeah, it's Nick Allen Ferner. And it seemed to escalate out of nothing. Take time, please, Ben. Ferner Take tackled time. Nick out. Nick out tried Nick to out. play the football, and Ferner went on with the tackle, and he'll be penalised. What's the frustration in there, Ben? What's the frustration in there? You've already you've already copped the penalty for being all over, David. I think I think this man's entitled to stand up and play the ball, right? And, mate, that's what he endeavoured to do. Irish. Yeah, well, mate, oh, but listen, no, forget it, forgetting that, forgetting that. Listen, no, just, just stand here, just forgetting that. Yep. There's a reason the game of football without any rubbish in, we're not going to have any. We're just not going to have any. Yeah. Oh, sorry, I didn't realise. <laughs> well, we don't have to say anything more. We could see it. Nick, our... was pulled down by Ferner a second time. Nick, our took exception to that. I don't recommend fighting... David Turner off your back though. But he got the penalty which he was entitled to get. I think the chosen pretty good on his feet too, eh? Lazarus. <laughs> Williams. Kamali. Little handoff then for Kearney. Canberra aware of his talents at getting rid of the ball. They have really swallowed him up. Kamali drifting across, putting Bowden back straight. So close. Wide to the left now. Kearney. 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 Short. For a moment, the big man would fall over and be over the line. Danny Williams, a dummy half. Long to the left. Kamali. Nickow. In for Bell. Now Kamali signals the bomb. There it goes. He's looking out wide. And up they go. Oh, a Siri Lang had a shot at it. And now Nagus comes away with it. And passes to Vainicolo. Well, he's got Kenny Nagus for catching the ball in the in goal area. I'm surprised that it went on for so now? long. No, I want to listen to the straight start. So it's a 20-meter restart. Good defense from the Raiders hanging on there. A lot of inside passes from the storm. They were well met by the inside chasing defenders. You're quite right, Peter, on the ruling. I your second question is the one that intrigues me. Why did he let it go so long for? Good one. Did he maybe think that... I've got no idea. Did he think that the storm winger caught it and maybe Nagus took it off him? Well, maybe the touch judge informed him otherwise, and that's why he called play to a halt. Maybe he thought as I did. I thought Lang got first, uh, got first shot at it. It's possible the touch judge did say to him, it was marked by the Canberra player. Let's run with that anyway. DeVico, Wolford. Sunday, the boys will bring you the match between Manly and Sydney City. Andrew Voss will call that game. And Paul will be there, of course. Well, not only as a member of the board, but he'll be there as a commentator as well. Lang. Let's see if we can entice him out of the private box for a couple of hours. We're very confident Sunday. Yes. Yes. Eagles. Bell. Kamali with a short ball away. Hill. Watching that little fisticuff there, Peter, earlier. 
reminded me of Borton when he took on, I think it was Jeff Gerrard or one of those players. Yeah, slapped him about off. Uh, Hammity. Now Swede. Nick out. Good ball. Hill. Better ball. Martin. Martin to the 10. Kamali in. Knocked down by Canberra. This will be six more, I feel. Rue up. Now what's Grant going to do? Nothing. Five. Calls five. Well, it definitely came off a Canberra player. Well, I thought it did. Kamali. Very, very high. Under it is the Volcano. No, he's lost it. But he's cleaned it. Well, has he? Yes, he has eventually. Cleaned it up by default. There was a Canberra hand, and it should have been six again. Fortunately, they'll get it back from the restart from under the posts. But I, I just can't see how the referee missed that. Well, this is it. There's no doubt about it. It's come off Brandon Pearson. It's gone backwards. Well, I would have thought that Melbourne had a chance to play six more. Well, the report is that the referee said that the Canberra player didn't play at it. Uh, that apparently nullifies any restart. If he didn't play at it, how did they get that ruling earlier on in the game? Here's a Siri Lang. There's a problem here for uh, David Schrader, I think it is. Yes, he's injured. Rua. There he is getting back into position. He was looking to the bench. And I think they said, get up and get back in the defensive line. We'll talk about you later. Kearney. We'll get some treatment to you after we quench this attacking fire. Hill, away, and it's Newell, who's tackled five out. Bye. Kamali, Nikau, Lazarus, rolling it down. There they are. Kamali, Hill, chance on, can he get it away? Yes, he can, but it came off Vegas. Now that should be six more. It is for Kamali. 17 is William. Morning again. Kirby! Oh goodness, this defence from Canberra has been good till Swain gets over the line, can't get it down, forced back in fact. Kirby again. Oh, on the bounce for Nikau. Nine metres out. Lazarus! Lazarus! Oh, so close. Kamali, Hill, himself, no, he's short again. Great stuff, great defence. Any chance Melbourne had of winning this game went out the window in that last five minutes. That's the best set of defence I've seen all year. They've held them out for a dozen tackles. Lazarus nearly got there. Every time they turn the ball back inside, now a relieving penalty goes to the Raiders. And Scott Hill, he scored most of his tries this year from within 10 metres and just fell short. That's Brett Finch hanging around his legs. The young boy that, uh, or the young man that came on as a replacement early. I'm talking, I'm talking to you, Stephen. We went to the scrum. I said, if you stand in front of me, I'll talk to you, which means you've got to come back to me before you can make the tackle. I can't give you a two metre start. Steve Roach on the yep. sideline. Yeah, well, Tony Martin, if you can get a shot of him, he's really struggling with a cork at the moment, so he's playing at fullback. He'll be found out if he keeps up. Talking of Finch, this is him taking the kick for touch. Thanks, Stephen. 6 4 Canberra. That's the uh, penalty count. Scoreboard much more generous. 18 to 2 in favour of the Raiders. Three tries, two to Schrader, and the other to McFadden. He was on the end of a brilliant try. 90 metres of it. Ruben Wicky. Wolfram to the left they go to McFadden and McClendon. McClendon in for Burnham. Burnham back in for Croker and Croker just put down. That's where they are, just outside the 20. They put some pressure now again on the Melbourne line. Corvo! Big 
defence from Williams and Rua. McFadden, little kick, getting it in behind Hill. Hill will be trapped, he takes it dead. There's been another profitable visit down to that in goal by Cameron. Yeah, plenty of pressure from the kicking game. The half and the 5-8 have done a great job in that department. That's a big shot from Danny Williams over the top. And when you consider that Laurie Daly generally has the kicking responsibilities for the Raiders, these two young inside backs really have done a marvellous job. The line dropout has not got a lot of volume about it. And Canberra will go back with Croker. First tackle, 28 metres off the line. They set it up again. Poor Rowe. Well, Jody's had a good game tonight. I, I thought he was going punch for punch with Wiki, but I think he's, he's in front of him now. Here's Wiki! Just outside the 10. Ferner to the wide line. And Williamson and Vainacolo. Vainacolo! Like a steam engine pulling them along. Like a steam engine that went off the I tracks. Can, I think I can. <laughs> Got derailed at the last minute. <laughs> it's not hard to tell. My first job was a fitter and turner on the railway, on the steam locomotive. Back, in, back in 45. Well, they got plenty of troops across in defence, Melbourne, and they needed that. The time's starting to slip away from them now. Really, Canberra just doing everything right. Defensively, they've just been tremendous, and their inside defence, as Paul pointed out, every time the Storm turn a ball inside, the Raiders not lazy there. They get troops across. Evans. Yes, Paul, I started working with nuts and bolts, and I fancy that I still am. You can't talk about block like that. <laughs> Here's Rua. They might as well try something. Kamali, Martin, and now it is with Nikau. They're just short of halfway, but they're not, they're not the machine like Melbourne that we've been watching. And a team that I know Steve Roach thought could go all the way. I don't think the big fella would be happy with the way things are unfolding tonight or last weekend. Stephen? No, they've been pretty ordinary, haven't they? Yeah, just their defence. I'm used to them dominating in defence, rushing out and putting pressure on the, the attacking team. They just haven't done that tonight. Just a quick one on... There's Lazo. He doesn't look real happy neither. Just a quick one on Mark Corvo. His career looked ended a couple of seasons ago when he was at Canberra. He went over the Adelaide Rams. Probably the best thing to come out of it. He was uh, the player of the year over there. Now he's come back to the Raiders and he's showing benefit from it. Good point, Steve. He's certainly showing the benefit of it right now. He takes another two defenders along with him, looking all the time to unload. Nagus has been brilliant. Croker's in there, working. Corvo offloading. Burnham's with it. This is a good Canberra effort tonight. They were good against Parramatta, but not as good as this. They push onward with another attack. McFadden across, looking for the jumper, and no need for it. Marcus By stayed on the ground and took it away. It's only a theory of mine, but I, I get the impression McFadden and McClendon, they come out of their shell, they're not as introverted, when there's no Ricky Stewart or Laurie Daly's around them. Well, that's probably fairly natural, I suppose, but, Ray, but I just think that, you know, that the more first-grade experience they get, the more confident they become, and I, I do take your point. I just hope that when Laurie Daly comes back into the team, in whatever position Mal uses him, that we still see the same creativity from both these young men. And I'm sure we will. Kamali. Rorty's kick. Came off Canberra, back with Melbourne. Six more. And the penalty goes to Melbourne now. In a similar vein, I remember Andrew Johns on debut. I think he was wedged in between or wedged in around people like Alan Lang oh. and Murray Daly. Brad right. Now Melbourne continue to bumble their way through this encounter. They've got a forward pass from the tap restart, and the referee nearly penalised them for a deliberate forward pass. And I thought that looked OK.
Yes, it was a very fine line. If you would expect the way Lady Luck is smiling tonight, that it would go Canberra's way. They've had everything going nicely for them. The team is playing well, but Lady Luck is with them. Asiri Lang, Asiri Lang. He's still going. He's there. Did he get it down? Yes, he did. This has been a big effort by the former Magpie. Well, referee Grant is still going to the video referee, but he scored here. I don't think there's any doubt that he's got the ball down. And the Siri Lang finally gets the ball over the line for Melbourne. A mistake from Jason Burnham. He had a bit to do, didn't he? 30 metres out. Beat the tackle of Schrader. The despairing dive of Ferner. And at the end, Ruben Wickey and Kenny Nagus tried to stop him. He kept his cool. And he gets the ball. Ah, oh, good try. Oh, it's a great effort there from the Siri Lang. And we'll see the green light in the tick. There it is. It's a long road back for the Melbourne still, no doubt about it. But uh, you would have to say that's the first bit of luck they've had all night. The drop ball from the Canberra Raiders. They haven't made in many mistakes at all, the Raiders. On this occasion, though, they have paid the penalty. A simple pass. I don't know what he was trying to do there, Burnham. And Lang just had plenty to do and did it well. Well done. First try of the year in the major grade for Asiri Lang. Kamali from 20 metres in from touch, and he's hit the upright. No goal. 18 to 6. Canberra over Melbourne. 62 minutes gone. Australia takes on India in Cricket's World Cup tonight. Bless me, Father, for I have sinned. What have you done, my son? Uh, a beautiful young woman, Father, from the town. Not Julie Richards? No, Father. Was it Wendy Hanley? No, Father. Not Sharon Casey? No, Father. Oh, very well, my son. Say 20 Hail Marys and don't do it again. How'd you go? Pretty good. Well, I've got three names for us. Back live at Bruce Stadium. And round 14, Canberra 18, Melbourne 6. Sparkling performance by the Raiders unfolding here. Let's hope, for their sake, they don't uh, do what they did at uh, Auckland. And more recently against uh, Sydney City. They can roll their tent up a little bit early here. Canberra in 1999, leading 18 to 6. And of course, following the football, we continue with a, a huge night of sport. I'll take you to the Oval. Ray Martin and Mark Taylor hosting Australia v India. And he's lost the ball. It's a penalty to Melbourne. Brett stand up to play. Well, he's saying that Brett Mullins didn't get to his feet to play the football. I think Mullins tried to milk it. Quick tap by the storm. Hill working with Kamali. And Kamali back for Bowden. Way in. Rorty stepping from one, pulled down in the next by Schrader. Penalty. It's against Melbourne for not standing up and playing the football. I'm just wondering whether there was any interference from the, the man who who tackled a Siri Lang. Well, in fact, it's not a Siri Lang, but Rorty. Well, if you were nitpicking, Peter, the man, the marker, was still all over the top of the man trying to get to his feet to play the ball. That's the point you're making. And um, there would be many that would agree with you. Let's have a look at this. This is Mullins taking the ball under the uprights. From the field of play. From the field of play. No problems there. There seem to be some people that thought... It should have been a 20-metre line uh, tap, but no. He left the field of play to land in the end goal. That is the correct ruling applied by Brian Clay. This is Croker. Pearson. Oh, 
very consistent tonight. Oh dear, oh dear. Oh dear, oh dear. In fact, he hasn't been, I know he hasn't had many opportunities, but he hasn't been the Marcus By of the standard set by him tonight, has he? No, he hasn't, and all that was needed there was to stop the football with his foot and then pick it up. There would be some teams that would say that the temperatures in Canberra are against them playing well, but Melbourne can't use that excuse. McClendon. Inside ball for Williams. Good Lionel. Good run, DeVico. Pressing again. And what's happened here? It's a penalty to Canberra. They'll take the two. Mad if they don't. At 12 in front, 14 would put the seal on it. The captain takes over. Talking of the captain, he wasn't on the field. I was wondering what Simon Wolford was doing, waving his arms about. He's obviously the vice captain. And Luke Williamson will take a simple kick for him. 12 metres out. Wednesday night, 7.30 live. Glenn Lazarus still having a running verbal with Brian Grant. Listening to Brian tonight consistently, you wouldn't like to be having a verbal with him at any time. 7.30 live, the origin, the Harvey Norman origin. And that ticket take number again for you. It's 9266-4800. 9266-4800. There are good seats apparently still there. So Ray Martin and Mark Taylor with the cricket after this. Williamson. And he's been pre pretty well impeccable tonight. Big Mal's happy. 20 points to six. His team's in front of Chris Anderson's Melbourne store. Enter a conspiracy that's all too real. The Pretender, Saturday. Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. What have you done, my son? Uh, a beautiful young woman, Father, from the town. Not Julie Richards? No, Father. Was it Wendy Hanley? No, Father. Not Sharon Casey? No, Father. Oh, very well, my son. Say 20 Hail Marys and don't do it again. How's your guy? Pretty good. Well, I've got three names for us. <laughs> To a familiar sight. Canberra on the attack. 15 metres into Melbourne's area. Croker puts it in the air. He leads the chase. And Martin is underneath it to be forced in goal. Good effort by Croker. He was the instigator. He was the leader. And that number nine jumper again was prominent. Still playing with plenty of enthusiasm, isn't he, Jason Croker? Been in first grade for a long time. Kick from dummy half, everybody on side. He still led the chase. And was able to drag Tony Martin through the, the momentum into the in-goal area. His dropouts haven't been all that crash hot from Melbourne. Mullins away for Pearson. Close. Wolford. They run the angle. What do you say? Corbo again. Good ball. Away for McFadden, who does a bit of a dipsy doodle. Gets it on to McClendon. McClendon desperately looking for support that wasn't there. Wolford to the right, to the blind for McFadden for Ferner. Ferner back. And Corbo! Five tackles have gone. Mullins saying, give me a bomb, give me a bomb. And it's with McFadden, he puts a grubber in. And it's with Lazarus for Melbourne. Martin. So they've scrambled their way through that um, attack. Melbourne. With Marcus Bond. 
been a big second half, hasn't it, from Mark Corva. He's been the star in the second half of the Raiders. It's Cavalli! Cavalli with a long run. One to beat. Turns it for Bell. Bell down and tackled. 30 metres away from the line. Cavalli. Beautiful tackle by Vainicolo. Nickow. Hill. Nickow. The zip of Kamali has been lost. They've bobbed down. He has to try and reignite it. He puts a kick across the ground, and up they go. A chance for Lang, but no. In touch, in goal. Paul, I interrupted you. Well, you can tell that Melbourne are off their game tonight because after that break was made, that long run by Kamali, the next two or three tackles, they had nothing. They just didn't know where to go, what to do, completely disorganised. Paul Bird actually slowed down, looking for support. He's played pretty well against tonight, Brett Kamali. Well, I think you've, you've nailed it. The defence has been fragile, but more importantly, there's been very poor support. Very poor. Kearney. Swain. Lazarus rumbling. Twenty points to six. Marquette. Kamali again. With the ball in his hands a lot tonight. And the rolling kick into the in goal cleaned up by Vainicolo. And you know what he's blossoming as a winger, Vainicolo. He really is. Well, he's, he's come back, hasn't he? Because he spent some time in first division early this season. He was chosen to play a test match. He's been in the top grade since then. I'm not quite sure whether Scott Hill chose the right time to put that kick in. It's only about the third or the fourth tackle. That on the shoulder for the young winger from Brett Mullins. Job well done. It's a better drop kick. Although Canberra haven't had to use that uh, that restart as much as Melbourne tonight. Their line dropouts have been quite poor by comparison, though. Oh, Kamali taken by Vico, and still the big man couldn't wrap him up. The word was that Brett Kamali was pushing for the number seven Origin jump up. Andrew John's hanging on to that though. Marcus by. Seems almost impossible to hurt. Blindside play for Nick Owls. Chance here for Vainicolo. Swain in pursuit. Vainicolo. It's a run of 50 metres. Tremendous effort. Tackle 40 metres away from Melbourne's line. From Wiki. Across. Burnham on. Look forward. Croker. 73rd minute. A break of 14 points in favour of Canberra. Ricky. Melbourne asked to make 40 more tackles in the game than Canberra. There they are, centre of the park. Approaching the 20 metre line. McClendon passing on that line. Further away from Kamali. Gets it on to Vainicolo. Clear space down the right. Turns inside. And he's going over to score. Vainicolo. Bringing the crowd up again. It looked to be forward the pass, but it's gone unnoticed. Yeah, I've got the mind it's a forward from here, but uh, the replay will tell the tale that a big couple of minutes for Vayna Colo. First of all, this pick up on the run, he's beaten three or four of them. Must pay credit to Tawira Nikau here. He chased and chased and chased, and it was he who brought him down. And then in the end, they go wide through the hands, Canberra through McClendon. This pass from Berner. What do you think, Reps? I thought it might have played before. Yeah. It's a good try, and well done, Vainicolo. He's had a great game tonight. And well done to the Raiders. They've just completely outplayed the storm. Yeah, I'm glad that this try doesn't decide the contest. I think there's a little bit of doubt about the pass, but if any man deserves a try tonight, it is the, the big winger. He's done a great job. And yes, give Nick Al a pat on the back because he made the mistake at the other end. He got poleaxed in passing the football, ended up on the ground, got up and chased finally caught Vainicolo about 60 metres down the road. 
It's not something that you enjoy doing when you're trailing 20 points to six. A lock forward chasing a winger. One of the great students of the game, the great coach Jack Gibson, would probably say that that was nearly the play of the night, you know, in his, in his way of assessing matches. I remember him using things like that to inspire people to push it right through for 80 minutes. And the uh, conversion, or should I say, yes, the conversion from Williamson. This rubs a bit more salt into a 26 to 6, Steve Roach. Yeah, you were just mentioning how Vanacolo has become as a winger. He's the one that made the break down the centre of the field, did well to position himself back out on that right wing. He went straight out there, and he was right on the spot to score the try. So, the routing continues. Canberra set it up in the first half, and they've gone on with it. You can't blame them for Melbourne's performance tonight. Maybe we've tended a little bit to overlook what Canberra's done. They've played very, very well. Meninga will be tremendously happy with them. I no, no Daly and no Kennedy either, remember. Yeah, they haven't had a poor play tonight. Mistake from the Raiders. It's all too late from the Melbourne Storm, no matter what they do. But it's full marks to Mel, and he'll be very happy smiling. It was an omen tip on the last at the Royal Canberra Golf Course today. He sunk a 20-footer for birdie. It was always going to be his night tonight. Siri Lang. Long ball for Kamali. Short pass up for Rua. Lazarus. Kamali Hill. Beautiful passing. Martin. And it's gone to Bay Nicolo. He's everywhere tonight. And he's absolutely in the right place. Yes, um, the uh, ankle biters were let loose on Royal Canberra today. I don't know that they'll be revisiting the great golf course, though, because there's no fairways left. It is a great golf course, too. And the, uh, no problems with the fairway, Ray. I was never on it. Pearson. Paul made the comment there hasn't been a bad Canberra player. He's quite right. The McDonald's man of the match is going to be interesting tonight. Thousand dollar award that McDonald's gives us every week, every Friday night, and tonight a difficult assignment. Well, I'll tell you what we've done. We've just thrown them all into a hat. We're going to get you to pick it out just after the match, right? I've got no doubt that in the Melbourne Storm they're missing two of their big guns, Rodney Howe, who, you know, when Glenn Lazarus isn't hitting the ball up, Howe's going, you know, next next door to him. So no Robbie Kearns as well. They've missed them. Scott Hill, he's played well. He's away. Turning it in for Bell, and then a floating pass. It might be play on, though. It's been called back. Ball has been propelled forward. Minute and a half to go. 26 to 6, the score. If I was voting on the man of the match, I think I'd be leaning a little bit towards the number eight for Canberra. Gee, I think he's been good tonight, Corvo. Time and time again tonight, when Melbourne have made the rare breaks. Last pass has gone to ground, or they've been run down. So the, the scrambling defence from Canberra has been wonderful tonight, and I'm sure that the defence, more than anything else, will be what pleases their coach Mel Meninga when he goes through this match. McClendon talking to McDonald's and the Burgers. They've been very good, haven't they? The Junior Burgers again tonight. I think McFadden's has probably been a bit. Bit better than McClendon tonight. They push each other, don't they, for the gold medal? Well, it doesn't get any easier for Melbourne. You'd have to say they're in a, a bit of a slump. The next couple of weeks, they've got Newcastle and then Sydney City. Then walk away. Just walk away from. And then uh, Manly. So three Go pretty away. hard games coming up for them. Wait. Well, Magus has given a penalty when in possession. He was inflamed by the marker. Grant penalised the man with the ball. A blemish on Nagus's game. Both wingers for Canberra have been tremendous tonight. Melbourne, though, they just bumbled and stumbled their way through. I feel very disappointed for them as a team, really, because they have given us some magic moments this year. You can do better than that. 
on a tight schedule anyway. So at full time, it is a 26 to 6 victory to Canberra over Melbourne. Melbourne in a bit of trouble unless they can correct this downward slide. We will take a break and be back with you very, very shortly with the McDonald's Man of the Match and a $1,000 check from the Big Bill. It's a giant State of Origin preview this weekend on the Sunday Footy Show. Former Blues coach Phil Gould is with us for the whole hour. Brian Fletcher drops in for a chat. Jeff Toobie tells us all about his return to origin. And what about our legend of league, the one and only Brett Kenny? That's Sunday morning from 11. Hard Warehouse brings you the best brands at the very best prices during our Price Buster sale. This great value set of four car mats in grey, black or brown are crazy $9.95. From Australia's number one home improvement centre, it's all here at Hard Warehouse. Rundle Australia's massive factory clearance starts Friday. Save hundreds on a huge range of quality menswear. Suits from $99, shirts from $10, sports coats from $85, silk ties from $15. Don't miss out. Starts 10 a.m. Friday, Albert Hall, Yarralumla. Bless me, Father, for I've sinned. What have you done, my son? Uh, a beautiful young woman, Father, from the town. Not Julie Richards? No, Father. Was it Wendy Hanley? No, Father. Not Sharon Casey? No, Father. Oh, very well, my son. Say 20 Hail Marys and don't do it again. How's your guy? Pretty good. Well, I've got three names for us. <laughs> Give that man in here. and electricity company delivering every time. Queensland's gonna whip you. Yeah, that'll be the day. You blokes should be running scared. Why? Is your mother gonna play? We've got you beat. Wanna bet? Second prize is all you'll get. <laughs> They're gonna pick you up and smash you and grind you in the dirt. Yeah? Well, that's if you can catch us. Mate, at full time, you're gonna hurt. Yeah. This weekend, in the Sunday Telegraph, you'll get an official Star Wars Phantom Menace poster free. It's big, it's glossy, and it's exclusive. So to avoid an intergalactic battle at your place, it'll be worth getting more than one. Free Star Wars Phantom Menace poster, only in the Sunday Telegraph. Sunday is the Sunday, without the Sunday Telegraph. Come rain, hail or shine, you'll always find the lowest home improvement prices at Bunnings Warehouse. Like Insulco, our 3.5 pack of 8 fat bats, $20.50. Summit, four-tier galvanised econo shelf, $22.77. Pole pruner with extension handle, $37.98. Plug smoke alarm, $6.98. Seagrass doormats, two for $3. If you happen to find a cheaper price elsewhere, we won't just match it, we'll beat it by 10%. Bunnings Warehouse! Lowest prices are just the beginning. Now it's down to the Super 6. The final series begins when Australia takes on Big Hitting India. We must win. Cricket's World Cup next. From the opening whistle, a game Canberra were never going to lose. They've defeated the Melbourne Storm 26 points to 6. It finished four tries to one. Young Schrader got a double on debut. Our $1,000 man of the match winner tonight, Mark Corvey, the prop from Canberra. A tireless display from him. He was wonderful in the middle of the ruck. And as we pointed out, don't forget, coming up very shortly, Australia's opening game in the Super 6 section of the Cricket World Cup.
that will be a, be a beauty. Hopefully the, the players can get the job done as Canberra did tonight here. But for now, on behalf of the Channel 9 crew from the National Capital, we wish you a very good night. This has been a presentation from Nine's Wide World of Sports. This program proudly brought to you by Tui's New, Mitsubishi, McDonald's and Hard Warehouse. Nothing in this world can prepare you for combat. It has begun! A handful of people on a leaky boat are going to save the world. Exactly. For the first time on television, Christopher Lambert. I don't think so. Exploding 8.30 Sunday on Win. Welcome to tonight's draw of the Lucky 7 One Million Dollar Lottery. Your host tonight, the incomparable Lucky. G'day. It's good to be here again. Well, let's get straight into it. First up is the Lucky 7. Match it exactly to win one million dollars. The Lucky 7 number is... One, one, seven, nine, nine, zero, zero. And now for the Lucky 6 number. Match it exactly for $20,000. Three, five, seven, nine, five, seven. And now for the Lucky 3 number. Match it exactly to win $20. Six, two, six. Thanks for joining us and remember, your ticket stays alive for five weekly draws. The Lucky 7 Million Dollar Lottery. Hey, it might as well be you. Australia is a lucky country. We have one of the richest and most diverse ranges of plants, animals and ecosystems on the planet. Biodiversity is the name we give to the variety of all these living things, the balance of all life forms, including us. We depend on biodiversity to survive, yet we don't often think about how we can support it. Protecting it must be our priority, because our future depends on it. It's easy, really. Even one person can make a huge difference. By supporting our native species, you're helping. Building a pond in your backyard attracts frogs, birds and other native animals and can look great as well. <laughs> Understanding biodiversity. Find out how you can protect our future and theirs as well. Biodiversity. For a free booklet on how you can help, call 1-900-957-025. Give back I gave him uh, for his birthday. Hey, hey, seen it all. That's different. With international music sensation Billy, Renee Gaya and CDB together. Ah! Chart Busters Islander. Sexy. Plus Aussie rockers friends are wrong. Hey, hey, it's Saturday on Win. Enter a conspiracy that's all too real. The Pretender, Saturday. This program brought to you by the Nissan Challenge. We challenge you to find a better deal. The 70s and Calypso Cricket conquers the first two World Cups. The 80s arrived and so did the Indians, taking the title, before the Aussies found themselves on top of the world. Down under in 1992, it was Pakistan's turn. Then the Sri Lankans belting the opposition. So who's going to wear cricket's crown as we head into the new millennium?
There you are at the Oval. The uh, covers have been taken off, of course, and uh, we have play. India won the toss and put Australia in. Good toss to win, Mark Taylor. Oh, a very good toss to win. I think the Oval is known for doing something with the new ball and with the, the covers being on for the best part of the last two days and being on over the last half hour, it's a good toss to win. And the man on screen there, Javagal Srinath, an underrated bowler, I think he is a, a man who could really do some damage with this new ball. A man as fast as, Ma as uh, McGrath, isn't he? He is as fast as McGrath, and in a way, a similar type bowler. Tall, angles the ball predominantly into the right-hander and can be very awkward to play. But not if he bowls there. Not if he bowls there. In <laughs> fact, they've been uh, changing each of the sides, Mark. Changing each of the sides, and not surprisingly, I think Australia have brought in Paul Rifle um, to replace uh, Brendan and Julian in the side, I think that's a good move. I think uh, with the conditions that have been prevailing in England, uh, the overcast weather at the time, Paul Rifle strengthens the bowling side. Uh, in, in the Indian side, Sachin Tendulkar comes in for Ramesh, the opening batsman. Uh, Robin Singh actually comes into the side, but Tendulkar goes to open the batting, which should be a great contest when him and McGrath lock horns at the start of the Indian innings. All right, you see that as well. The last four players in both sides are in fact bowlers, as you see there, so uh, that's pretty even. I think it, it's a... I think 